Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Backwood Solar YouTube video. In today's YouTube video, we're going to be covering the programming of four or more Victron inverters using the VE Bus System Configurator, which is part of the VE Configure tool package from Victron. Let's get into it. We're going to start the configuration process by launching the Victron VE Bus System Configurator tool. This is part of the VE Configuration tool package available for download on the Victron website. Keep in mind at this time, this software package is for Windows only, not available for Android or Mac OS. First thing we're going to do is go up to Options and check that Scan for Available COM ports is checked. If not, you'll notice under COM port, you'll get a whole bunch of COM ports showing. But once you check that box and you go back to COM port, you will find that just the available COM port will be shown there. This is almost always the MK3 in our case. We're going to go ahead and click on the available COM port, in this case COM3. It's going to warn us here to make sure we have our inverters connected in the proper sequence, all inverters connected to each other, and only the inverters daisy chained together with the MK3. Each inverter should be on and blinking in an alternating green-yellow fault mode. You should see after scanning the VE bus network, the software should pull in all of the inverters connected within that network, in this case four separate inverters. You can see on the left here the number of unconfigured devices and the corresponding units on the right. First thing we need to do is identify these units by flashing their LEDs. Starting at the first unit, we will right click on the first inverter unit and then select flash LEDs. You will now see a unit on the wall with all of its LED lights flashing. You can now name this inverter based on its electrical position. Right click, choose rename, and in this case, this inverter corresponds to the L2 master inverter. Click OK. Make sure you go back to the inverter that's flashing, right click on it, and stop the LEDs from flashing. Then repeat with subsequent inverters. Right click, flash LEDs, look up at the wall, see what inverter that corresponds to. Go back and right click again, choose rename, and in this case, this is the L1 slave inverter. Click OK. We will now repeat this with the remaining two inverters. Now that we have all the inverters named, we have to decide what kind of power we would like for the system. We're going to go here and click on the single phase button. This will allow us to select the kind of output we want from the system. We have the options here of single phase, parallel, dual phase 120, dual phase 180, which is most common, dual phase 240 degree, and then a three phase. Again here, and with most people you'll, for America, you'll be doing a 180 degree split phase. We also have the option of having that L2 phase floating or in an auto situation to accommodate for changes in phase angle. Uh, but for this application here, we're going to do an L2 fixed. So just a normal North American configuration with an L1 and L2 phase. Now we have to choose which inverters belong in what phase. And this is why naming them uh, previously is so helpful. So we can simply just start dragging the appropriately named inverters into their phases. So the L1 inverters, we can drag them right to the L1 phase and drop them in. And the same with the L2 inverters, drag and drop them onto the L2 phase. Once we drop them in, we can click on the given phase and see the phase order. We want to be sure that the slave inverter is second and the master inverter is first. And we can always swap that order by dragging them around. final step now is to just double check both phases and the positions of all the inverters are correct. So by checking L1 in those positions and L2 and that we have no configured devices, triple check our phase configuration and then we're going to go up to the top here to configure and we're going to go ahead and choose send configuration. That's going to go ahead and take our currently configured layout and push it to the inverter system. Once the inverter configuration is sent, you should see the inverters reset and have the master inverters with a solid green LED light 
and the slave or secondary inverters with a blinking green LED light. If you're dealing with an inverter system that's pre-programmed and you want to change the configuration of the system, you can go up to the configure and do git configuration. This will pull the file from an existing inverter system to allow you to modify it or make changes to it. As you can see here, because the system is pre-programmed, there are no unconfigured devices. And when you click on each phase, you can see the programmed inverters. Up above here is a very important box. This is called switches group. This allows a 240 volt inverter system to accept a 120 volt input or a three phase to accept two phases. So in this case, we're gonna uncheck that and we're going to send configuration to send that change. Now that the system configuration is complete, the last step is to program each individual inverter for function, such as battery type and charging parameters. So two ways to do this. The first is to right click on the inverter you'd like to program and choose VE Configure Multi. This will open the VE Configure 3 software to allow inverter specific programming, such as battery type, virtual switch, AC input control, low voltage disconnect, etc. The other way to finish the individual inverter programming is to launch into Victron Connect. Once you connect to the inverter system, if you click on the gear icon in the upper right, enter the password of ZZZ, you will see all four inverters will load in and will be available for individual programming. We'll click here on the phase one inverter and we'll see we'll have a lot of the same settings that we have in the VE Configure 3 to set up the programming to each inverter. You can back on and select each inverter by just clicking on it and adjusting the settings. A lot of the setting changes in Victron Connect do occur instantly where you don't have to send settings, but sometimes you will find that the inverter system does need a reset for certain settings to stick. On the next video, we're gonna pick up where this video left off in the detailed program of each inverter using the Victron Connect software. If you have any other additional comments or questions, please leave those in the comment box below. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. Backwood Solar is America's oldest and most trusted solar retailer with nearly 50 years of experience. Head over to our website, backwoodsolar.com, to get a free copy of our planning guide. While you're there, check out our learning center with articles on setup, sizing, tax credits, and so much more helpful information, especially if you're just getting started with solar. There are also links provided in the description.